so we'll get started. Um, hi everyone, this is Sarah and Morgan, and we'll be presenting on our project on office hours um, about who uses them, who doesn't use them, and why. Um, so this project essentially started when we started having conversations with course mates who are new to LSE um, about how they perceive office hours. And we were really surprised to see that some of them might see office hours like, I might just pop along to ask a question, maybe just introduce myself to the professor. And other people would say, I would never go to office hours unless I had something really, really important to ask because I wouldn't want to waste the professor's time. Um, and through these conversations, we started to realize that these different perceptions of what office hours are and what they're supposed to be used for might be forming barriers to people using office hours more. And those barriers will be differential depending on students' backgrounds and what they perceive as a useful question or what they want to bring to those office hours. Um, so in order to answer this question, we decided to use a mixed methods approach. Um, on the one hand, to make the most of the massive amount of data now available thanks to the new student hub booking system. And on the other hand, to conduct interviews to understand more what's actually happening behind the patterns that we see in the data. So in terms of those patterns that we saw in the data, um, it really boils down to two main things. The first interesting observation is that the profile of a student hub user, the profile of the students who are overrepresented in that student hub data, is usually BME students, female students, and overseas students, which is really interesting because it's sort of counterintuitive in terms of what we know about the sort of barriers that certain students face in terms of accessing other types of educational provisions. So on the one hand, it could be the case that BME female and overseas students go to office hours more, but an important qualification is that it could be that those students simply rely more on the formal methods to book office hours and have those interactions with professors, whereas their male, white and home UK or home EU student counterparts might be just using more informal methods like dropping an email to say, when can I meet? Or on the other hand, maybe just chatting after class or something. Um, the other observation we found was that the longer an office hour is, the less likely it is to be cancelled, which really fits in line with what we found in the interviews, uh, which is what Morgan is going to go into now. Oh, Morgan, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so based on the analysis of our interviews, we had uh, four main topics that we wanted to discuss. And the first one is uh, reasons to go to office hours. Uh, the predominant reason to go to office hours was academic help, seeking academic help, uh, mainly clarification on topics that they misunderstood, but also feedback clarification and a sort of go ahead for summative work when they wanted to present their plans and see if they were in line with what they wanted to do. Uh, additionally, career help, such as guide, seeking guidance or networking, and uh, a minority of students also wanted to kind of tap into the expertise and knowledge of LC professors and kind of had this academic curiosity uh, to fulfill. So we also asked what makes a good office hour and two main things came clearly. Uh, first, the quality of the feedback and, uh, and answers. Mainly they wanted clarity and straightforwardness from, from professors in answering the questions that they raised. And secondly, the relational style and words like approachable, open, and how interest the professor is on, on the topics that the student are, is raising were, were very important to them. And obviously the converse of that when they were describing negative uh, instances of office hours. But our main um, finding, and this goes in line with the previous presentation, was the dynamics of time. Time was raised as a barrier for going to office hours and enjoying office hours very much. Uh, they deemed them too short for either purpose, either academic help or finding kind of that relationship, but also that academics time is highly valued. So they felt rude taking up their time. They felt like a burden. And that was something that we wanted to kind of explore with our recommendations. Uh, finally, that students, mo like most students wanted to keep uh, online office hours as an option, even when we return in person because of that convenience. So in our recommendations, uh, we decided to go for messaging and resourcing. So firstly, lecturers and class teachers should push office hours more, uh, reminding students throughout term uh, of the office hours and telling them what the current take up of office hours is so that, they, so that students don't feel like a burden if the take up is very low. And secondly, departments should create guidelines for teachers and students alike on how to conduct a good office hour, how to be productive in the office hour, and should thoroughly explain what office hours are and what they're, and essentially market them as a highly valuable uh, educational tool. 
given that office hours we found are culturally different, different cultures might understand office hours differently and it's not a universally understood uh, um, concept. And additionally, finally, uh, the option of online office hours uh, should be kept when in-person resumes and that we would recommend that departments have different time slots so that students that want more time can, can book them, but sometimes students might want less time so they can book the shorter office hours as well. So yeah, we're happy to go into that uh, in uh, Q&A.